Long before I thought about writing this book, Declutter Your Home, my life was an absolute disaster because of the amount of boxes and crates and rubbish that I had filling so many aspects of the houses that I lived in. The accumulation of, for me predominantly, books and magazines, but also clothes that I was never going to wear again, household items that were way past their sell-by date, antiques and furniture, but really just memorabilia of childhood and other family members who had gifted me things over decades. This was causing my whole house to almost creak at the seams and to be an impossible place to live. And I went one day to my favourite bookshop, a place called Salts Mill and Salts Bookshop in Salt Air in West Yorkshire, close to our home in Bradford. And I looked at various books and I almost bought one. I picked up a book and I was walking to the till with it when I thought, what on earth am I doing being on the point of buying another book to fill my house, to read once, to stick on a shelf and then to forget about and to carry around with me for several years. The idea that I was about to do that and add to maybe another two and a half thousand books in the house, in boxes, in crates, all wrapped and packed, maybe just three or four hundred on display in the living room and my study. But the idea I was going to buy another book and take that into the house I just thought, Nick, what are you doing? This is an insane behavior. And for the first time in many years of walking to a till with a book, I actually turned around, went back to the shelf, placed it on the shelf and walked out of the shop. And at that point, I realized I had an opportunity to overcome my personal hoarding tendencies and to step away from the clutter that had been dragging me down and draining my energy for so many years. A year later, during a thing called NaNoWriMo or National Novel Writing Month, I sat down and I started to put together my notes on what I had been through in that previous year about reducing the amount of absolute crap and rubbish and clutter in my house and in our living space to the point where now, a few years later, I've been able to move from one country to another. I have sold more than a thousand individual secondhand books last year on eBay. That paid for air tickets to fly to Mexico and other sales of clutter, whether it be clothing, military uniform, medals, historic books being the main bulk of things. I have been able to start a new life in a new place, completely free of clutter. This is the book that came out of that exercise. It's called Declutter Your Home. And it has the brilliant subtitle, even if I say so myself, letting go of all the stuff you don't need. One of the massive triggers for us was thinking, how do we move from the place that we live to a place that we would prefer to live in and to do so in a way that is smooth and easy and fairly stress-free? Largely, it has been a stress-free move. When I totaled up all the books that I had in my possession and thought about hiring a shipping container and the eight weeks that would take to go from the docks at Southampton to Veracruz on the eastern coast of Mexico, the company I spoke to wanted £8,000 for that small half portion of a container. And that would have been to move two and a half thousand books, a couple of vintage writing desks, a Georgian mahogany hall table, some beautiful mirrors, things like that. And I just thought, no, there's absolutely no point. I don't need those. Right now, I have a timetable for letting go of things, for selling things, to giving things away, to doing swaps of a large bulk series of items for maybe some digital things that I wanted. And that process has been fairly successful. But the idea of wanting to move and realizing we couldn't afford to because of the accumulated rubbish that I predominantly was hoarding, that was the wake up call. Let me share some ideas with you. I've talked about the idea that I was going to buy another book and what a waste that would have been. But my major clutter devil is my addiction to books. For years I've bought books almost as soon as I've touched them. Once I was asked by a friend to remove stacks of books from their home loft out of the fear that the ceiling below their loft would collapse because of the weight of the books that they had very kindly 
been storing for me while I was in between accommodation. To let go of anything requires a decision. To let go of our generic stuff can be a difficult process for many of us, given that the size of the task is so massive. It's actually daunting and something very difficult to do. Somewhere in our head, we know that we have too much, too many food processing gizmos, too many magazines on home style, too much underwear or winter coats or gardening tools or drinking glasses or pots and plates and pans or walking sticks or reading glasses or knives and forks. You get the idea because you know your own living space so very well. We will watch TV shows about tiny homes, I'm fascinated by those, or practicing a minimalist lifestyle which seems to require a yurt or a container home, and we're put off downsizing. To be honest, the more I see the really good container homes online, the more inspired I am by what can be done to shed the non-essentials. We understand, you and I, both of us, that there is a massive link between what we have and how that maybe stops us releasing ourselves into a more simple lifestyle where we are carrying so much less with us that we become more flexible and become more mobile. We attach feeling and meaning, nostalgia and memory to every item that stays on our shelves, in our cupboards and which hangs on our walls or has a special place on the window ledge. Many of the feelings and thoughts which we pin to the objects are deep rooted and we are unaware of the pull we have to each item. With another possession, we might have a clear memory of the occasion when it was given to us and by whom. The memory can be good or bad or downright unpleasant, and yet we still, because something was maybe gifted to us or provided as a, a present or a memory of a special time, we hang on to that thing, even if our own memories of the event are not necessarily that positive. It feels like by throwing something away or giving it away or selling it, we are somehow being dishonest or disrespectful or primarily ungrateful for the item that was given to us. Yet it is our house that is being filled with the things that we no longer need. Are you hanging on to old diaries that record things that happened 10 years ago, even household budget accounts that you no longer need because they are so far into the past that even if you're self-employed and you're meant to maintain a record for six or seven years of your accounts, that time has passed, you can let go of those things. What about wedding presents you were given? What about birthday presents that no longer even work or they're cracked or broken and they have no real functioning value but you still have them. Maybe you don't keep them in your living room or in your favorite bedroom. Maybe they are pushed into an attic or a loft or you filled your garage with boxes and crates of these sorts of things. They are a real hold on you and they stop you having a more flexible, more mobile lifestyle and they are holding you back for new and better opportunities than you're living with right now.